What is up guys and welcome back to the John and Q channel. Thanks so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Canon EOS R which I'm using to record right now and why I use it, why it's my main camera for both video and photo as a content creator, as part of my job and as a YouTube creator. So let's get into it. But before we get into the video, I'm announcing a giveaway. I'm partnering with this amazing lens company. I can get it out. Sandmark, Sandmark lenses. If you've seen my channel, if you followed me for quite some time, you know that I've partnered with Sandmark on a couple other videos and I've reviewed their gear. And I absolutely love their lenses. Essentially, they make lenses for your phone, lenses for your iPhone to make your mobile photography and mobile video to the next level. It takes it to the next level and you can totally upgrade your photos and video. To enter this giveaway, it's super simple. You just have to do a few things. Subscribe to Sandmark's YouTube channel, subscribe to my channel, comment in this video below why you would want this and what you would use it for, and that's it. By doing those three things, you'll be automatically entered to win this Sandmark lens. It starts now on November 29th and goes through December 6th. I just want to thank Sandmark for being such an amazing company to work with. We are partnering on this giveaway and I'm so excited because, hey, it's the holidays. You never know, you could win. And if you just, you want to, go ahead and use a link down in my description below to just buy one of these for yourself or a loved one. I'll leave a link down in the description below. That's my personal link. So if you buy something from the website, I get a little bit of a kickback, so thanks so much. But they have more than just wide lenses. They have macro, they have zoom, they have super wide lenses, but go check it out. They're amazing. And for mobile photography, this is all I use. I'm just gonna get right into it. The Canon EOS R is superb for both photo and video. Like I feel like that's, that's all I should say and we should be done, but for real, it's a workhorse of a camera. On the photo side, I have no complaints whatsoever. I will say I could use a faster shutter speed so I can get more frames per second. I mean, overall, I don't have any complaints only because it has some of the specs and it has got 30.3 megapixels just like the Canon 5D Mark IV. And the Canon 5D Mark IV is my bread and butter. Like I know that camera, I know how to use it. I know everything there is to know about the camera and just how to maneuver it on the field, right? All of that knowledge now has transferred onto the Canon EUSR, and I have no doubt on how to use the Canon EUSR for photo. Now, because I'm coming from a Canon 5D Mark IV, another workhorse of a camera for photography, like, I feel the same with the R. As far as my photos go, they're sharp, they're clear, and it's just, it's just, the, pr the pictures are present, if that makes sense. Versus when I shot on a Canon 6D Mark II, I just felt like on the photo side, my pictures weren't coming out as present, they weren't as sharp, they weren't as clear, and it just wasn't, I wasn't happy with it, but it was okay. Now mind you, I was using Canon Red Glass. So I was using the Canon 16 35 L lens, the 24 to 70 L lens, and the 70 to 200 L lens on the 60 Mark II, but for some reason, and it might be because of the higher megapixels and the overall better processor in the R, my pictures look so much better on the R versus the Canon 60 Mark II. So if you're one who's looking to upgrade from like a 60 mark ii sure do it for the photo side but i wouldn't say that you should do it right away just because you really have to be utilizing the canon usr for like let's say wedding photography commercial shoots but if you're just an avid photographer who likes to go out in nature shoot with your friends that kind of stuff then maybe stick with what you have now and when you get more work like commercial work and weddings and all that stuff all that stuff comes in then you can start upgrading and looking at the EUSR or something like the 5D Mark IV. All right, let's talk about the video side, which is something that I, I love talking about because it's what I use the camera for mostly. I would say like 60% video, 40% photo. Sometimes it goes 70, 30, but mainly I use my R4 video. And here are the things that I do like about the EUSR. 24 frames a second. It's got 60p for slow motion. It does have 120 frames a second, but it doesn't have 1080 or 4K option. It has the 720p option, which I will never use the 120 frames a second unless I really had to and had to get a, a shot in smooth slow motion. But because it's at 720 like image, I'm not doing that. If it was at 1080, it'd be perfect. If it was at 4K, even better. And hopefully maybe in the future that would be a firmware update, I don't know. It's possible, but I, I only wish. Another thing worth mentioning is the flip out screen. That flip out screen is golden when it comes to video creation and also on the photography side, but mostly if you're vlogging, you wanna see what you're doing, you wanna see composition, 
And just like right now, I've got the screen flipped out and I can see everything I'm composed properly, exposed, like I love that. And aside from the EUSR having different specifications for button layouts and my own custom layout, which I'll link up here, I talk about that in a different video. Uh, go check it out if you haven't and come back here. Uh, I will say the video side is very familiar if you used like something like the Canon 60, the 60 Mark II, any Rebel series, the 5D series, it's all, it's all pretty much the same across the board when it comes to Canon. This is just a camera that works for me. You know what I mean? It, it does work properly. I know how to use it because I've used Canon for a long time. Some of my complaints are minor, but for the most part, it's a great camera. So when it comes to creating video in low light situations or just blackout situations, you know, something like, like this perhaps, you know, once I start getting an ISO up there, it does start to get a little grainy and a little noisy, but usually I'm pretty good with lighting and I have lighting already set or I have control about the lighting that I don't have to worry about it so much. Something to note and something to say that, yeah, it doesn't do as well as other cam manufacturers out there in low light. Other than those few things, I don't really find like a big concern or I don't have a major concern with a lot of the specs when it comes to cameras and you know the 120p at 4k and when it comes to this camera specifically i know there were a lot of people that were just super skeptical right out of the bat right out of the gate and now those people are now reviewing the eosr and they love it so i'm not one of those people i'm just saying that i think this camera has more to offer than people really saw to begin with and i've seen that on both photography and video with my work what i used to do is when i was on shoots i would you know if i only had let's say i had a canon 60 mark ii and the 5d mark iv i would use the canon 60 mark ii for video because i knew that side of the canon 60 mark ii i knew how to control the video and that's what i would use for video but then when it came to photography time to you know get the photo shoot done i would switch over to my 5d mark iv and yes the 5d mark iv has the same specs so why wouldn't i use a 5d mark iv for video to me, it just wasn't as, I'm gonna say present again. It wasn't as good, it wasn't as clear. But for some reason, the Canon 60 Mark II just, it did it for me. It was great quality, and I would always get complimented, always get raving reviews on the Canon 60 Mark II. Whenever I would use a 60 Mark II, I would get so many good reviews, and I would get more work because of it. And it, it's a very minor difference, or major, depending on how you look at it, but just the 5D Mark IV footage, I wasn't a big fan of. And so, but something about this new processor, something about this new, the, the R, specifically, when it comes to video, I'm a huge fan. It's like a, it's almost like an upgraded 60 Mark II. Like they put the 5D Mark IV specs, the Canon 60 Mark II weight, combined together and have this like really good baby, <laughs> the EOSR. Should you upgrade from whatever camera you have to the EOSR? It depends. If you really wanna get Canon mirrorless, there are other options, but I don't think you'd be happy with those options unless you got the EOSR. And this video is not sponsored by Canon. I'm not just saying that. I'm only saying that because I've worked with the EOSR for quite a while and I love everything about it. But overall, I'm incredibly happy with this purchase. Right now you can get the EOSR for like, I think either new or used for 1700 bucks, US dollars. That's pretty, that's pretty crazy. I think just the body only. That's insanely great price. And if you already have Canon and glass like I do, just get the adapter and you're good to go. Yeah, those are my thoughts on the EOSR and what I've used it for and how it's worked out for me on both photo and video. Are you gonna upgrade? Let me know in the comments below. What are you gonna do? What's your camera now? And are you thinking of upgrading to the EOSR? Maybe the 5D Mark IV? I hear there are new cameras coming out in 2020, so. Let me know. I would love to chat with you. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please like this video, and I'll catch you next time on the Johnny Q channel. Peace.